All right, ladies and gentlemen, since I'm no good in destroyers, I brought in one of the best destroyer players I know of. We got Bravo Foxtrot on the line. He's going to tell you the top 10 things on how to improve your destroyer gameplay. Bravo, take it away. All right, so pretty much uh, the basics are what I'm going to cover. Uh, just about 10 or so items. It'll just, uh, it's not going to cover everything. But this is going to cover what I think is most important, give you a good foundation to work with and uh, hopefully learn and, and grow from. Uh, number one being survival and situational awareness. Uh, play for play for the long game. Surviving, uh, I mean, just will help your team in so many different ways, whether it be spotting, capping, uh, or if it comes down to it and you just have to run because you guys have the score and everything else like that, but you just need one ship to survive to win, then hey, I mean, it's going to lead right into that. Um, YOLOing should be an absolute last resort. I mean, if you're in a lane slide loss and everything else like that, and you see in the beginning, hey, maybe that's that's what you got to do. But hey, when you when you know what you got to do, so be it. Uh, but know when to back off a capture point as well and survive. Uh, you can always come back to capture points, get them later. Yes, it's going to suck losing a little bit of points in the beginning, but just surviving, coming back around to it, uh, just is just super beneficial, especially you being alive. So point number one being survival, right? Yeah. You're no good to your team if you're that. dead. Absolutely. All right, and then number two, camouflage. That's usually one of the big indicators when you're playing with uh, a DD on your team that's that's usually pretty brand new or maybe just consumable poor. Uh, but you absolutely need need to put camouflage on there, preferably maxed out so you get the dispersion and the uh, concealment benefits. Um, yeah, if you're seeing you're vulnerable, I think that goes without saying. Concealment is pretty much your biggest friend. Uh, to the higher tiers, what I would recommend, concealment, if you're a gunboat, you're probably going to want to be about a 5.5, plus or minus whatever. Uh, if you're a torpedo boat, you usually want to be 5 kilometers or just below that. That's that's a good number to shoot for. I know it's not going to be realistic with some of you guys not having Swarovski or Bay built up, but that's that's the game. that's the goal. Uh, three, the perk Unstoppable, uh, or some other form of engine protection. Because I know there are some commanders that have the uh, that first tier perk that give you engine protection and splash splash damage to protection. Um, you need mm -hmm. that, and that's that's one of those things I learned hard over and over again until I finally just stuck with it. There are very few ships that I use that don't have unstoppable on it, but there's nothing worse than getting double tapped in the engine. I mean, you know what I mean? You, you repair that engine, you get hit again, your engine's broke, and then guess what? Torpedoes or planes or whatever else are coming right at you, and there's not a damn thing you can do. The next one, twist and track. This one is, I've had people go both ways about this. Me, personally, I prefer it on, I would say, 95% of my ships. Uh, it's, it's almost necessary, whether you're a torpedo boat or a gunboat. Uh, just the information it gives you can be the difference between life or death. Refer to step one. Uh, I mean, if you're getting approached by something behind an island and it's not getting spotted by your team, that may be your way to find out about it. Uh, hunting down their last DD when you have to get that last kill to win. That's important. Uh, what else is there? Maybe getting pincered by two enemy DDs. You know what I mean? You're fighting one guy, and he's he's located, he's in front of you, you're getting close, and then all of a sudden it switches to directly behind you. You're like, oh, shit, I'm in a really bad place. That's another good way. Uh, so there's just so many benefits to it. Yes, you can be successful without it, like if you have a carrier or somebody else with twist and track, but I always recommend having it. Uh, what else is there? Oh, with Twist and Trek also, with experience, you'll also be able to tell if somebody's getting closer or further away. When you start to see the more significant swings and movement from the Twist and Trek, that usually means you're getting closer, and they're usually moving left or right. Um, spotting and capping. If you're not doing one or both of these, you're uh, you're probably doing it wrong, unless you're in one of those scenarios where I just covered, like you're getting pincered or chased down by radar or aircraft or whatever else like that. So... That should be the only pretty much time that you're not spotting or capping or doing something to, to benefit your team instead of just being off on your own and, and trying to torpedo a CV or, or something silly. Um, all right, to go into the, the ship types a little bit more, uh, torpedo boats. Uh, there is a lot of people, and I hate to see this, that think that just because they have 11-kilometer torpedoes, they have to fire all their torpedoes at 11 kilometers. No, that's not the case, man. Don't be afraid to get closer. The shorter the shorter range you are, the less travel time, the less the less chance they have to to avoid it, and less spread there's going to be on those torpedo. You know what I mean? Um, what else do I see torpedo boats doing? Uh, putting all of your eggs in one basket. I think you know what I'm talking about. Where they see somebody driving this way, 
and they fire all three or whatever sets of torpedoes in the exact same spot. And then that dude just turns a little bit or slows down or speeds up a little bit, and you completely miss. Yeah. Uh, yes, it pays off sometimes with the dev strikes or whatever else have you. Maybe if their nose on, there's a good reason to fire them all in one spot. But, yeah, for the most part, you, you, you want to spread them out or even even delay, like fire is set here and fire is set there, and keep them guessing on where the hell they're going to be coming from and when mm -hmm. they're going to be coming. Um, also, when you're a torpedo boat, communicate to your division. Like, when I'm playing with Peek or Aaron or, or some of my other friends, I mean, you, you land a torpedo, you get a flood, pay attention. If you stay flooding, cool. Hey, let them know. Hey, he's flooding, he's still flooding. When they damage Con, call that shit out. Uh, let them know, because the rest of the team can take huge advantage of damage cons, and that's that's a very basic uh, lesson for success right there, is, is taking advantage of those damage cons. Um, Agreed. And I, yeah, and I would say the last thing, just because your torpedo boat doesn't mean you can't use your guns, whether it be just to get a reset or maybe light a fire, but be selective on when you do it, because you surviving is, once again, one of the most important things. Uh, next one, knife fighting, gunboats, things like that. This is one of the ones that <laughs> I've learned hard, and and I'm still continuing to learn. But uh, be selective on when you get into a gunfight. Uh, know where you are. Uh, know like friendlies and enemies who's around you. Like goes back to being situationally aware. You don't want to be within eight kilometers of their battleships uh, fighting a DD because their battleships are not going to have a hard time hitting you. You know what I mean? Bring them to you if you can. Unless you know you're just going to outright finish the guy in one or two shots and be able to smoke and, and deuce out, you, you probably don't you don't want that you don't want that fight right then and there. Other things to think about when you're uh, when you're fighting a DD, I like to I don't go perfectly broadside. That's usually just asking to get hit. Uh, be aware of your surroundings. Know where the enemies are. Usually you want to be skinny to like their battleship. So say you're fighting a DD and he has one battleship or one cruiser in support. I almost want to keep myself skinny to that DD, or sorry, that, that battleship or cruiser, uh, while I'm continuing to fight that other guy. Why? Makes me a harder target for the big guys to land the big shells on me. Uh, and being at a 45 away or a 45 towards gives you a little bit better reaction time when it comes to enemy DDs throwing torpedoes and shit like that at me. You know what I mean? Hitting the, hitting the brakes, uh, turning hard so you can come to a stop quicker and, and maybe potentially uh, dodge all the torpedoes. That's another one of those things that just comes with with experience. I still eat torpedoes on the daily. Next, carriers, airplanes. Uh, unless you're specifically set up for it in like a Friesland uh, or whatever else, just avoid that shit completely if you can. Uh, whether it be just going a little bit around uh, or just, I don't know how else to put it. I'm sure there's a good way. You got any, any ideas on how to word that? Because you don't want to just run away from CVs, right? You, you have a cap, you got to do something about it, whatever else like that. But you don't want to get so far away that like your AA or your, your buddy's AA that's there to support you isn't effective and helping protect you. So it's cool if you can get up there, you can smoke, you can get your cap on, do whatever it is. But don't put yourself in too bad of a position to where you can't get away. Because aircraft will jack up a DD in the right situation most of the time. Especially if it's um, me and a Parsifal. You're you're pretty much KIA. Yeah, and then him mentioning that is also another a good caveat to that. Knowing what kind of carrier you're up against and knowing their damage types, whether it be torpedoes, AP bombs, HE right. bombs, and then also which way to shape your boat to their attack. For example, a Lexington's coming at you. You want to be broadside to that. Get yourself as small, small a piece of yourself in that in that aiming circle for his bombers as possible. Mm -hmm. On well, the vice versa of that, if he's coming at you with torpedoes, you probably want to be facing directly away or preferably directly towards him. If you're away, you have a 99% better chance of dodging and or just outrunning those because, like, for example, Lexington torpedoes are very slow. Mm -hmm. So there's something for each and every individual CV, but just as an example, you can use that to help yourself out. Um, dodging, I kind of touched on a little bit earlier. Uh, it's trial and error torpedoes and gunfire and this, that, and the other. Like, I don't have a hard time dodging an Atlanta or a, or any American cruiser at, a, at over nine kilometers. Why? Just because they have so much flight time. But when you're getting into torpedoes and, and the and the higher velocity shells from, like, battleships or, or Russians, mm -hmm. uh, hitting the brakes and turning and stuff like that can help you stop so much significantly faster. 
uh, to be able to just keep yourself out of harm's way. And once again, going back to rule number one, staying alive. Staying alive. Um, the most important. Alive. That's why it's rule number one. Being familiar with enemy ships and capabilities, this is more towards the upper end of uh, the basic stuff because, I mean, you're only going to get that with experience and playing the ships or studying. Uh, but know what your enemies enemies are, what if they have radars or the potential of a radar. For example, a lot of people don't know, like, Minotaurs and Edinburghs don't have, have the potential radar. Things like that, knowing the, the ranges and the, and the durations. Uh, baiting those items out of out of those ships so you can actually get more aggressive is is effective. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing what DDs you can outspot and which ones you can't. You know what I mean? If you're in a, a Russian right. DD which has some terrible concealment and you're trying to chase down a, a, a torpedo DD, well, you're going to have to deal with being outspot a little bit if you got to chase them down. So being selective when you when you choose to do that. Um, knowing which DDs you can outgun and which ones you can't. Another very important thing. Uh, for example, a Friesland, most of the time, I mean, I will, I will do what I can to spot and, and torment a Friesland, but I'm not going to get into a straight-up gunfight with one of those unless I'm in a, an advantageous position, whether it be like Cabot range or a gearing or or maybe just a Loyang with the increased range of sonar. Which brings my, my last point around uh, also knowing which DDs have radar and sonar because that is effective. Now, knowing that the, most of the British have 3.5 kilometer sonar, Knowing that the the Germans have like the four, or four point two, or four point four, depending on the tier, sonar. Uh, knowing the Loyang has a five point four. Knowing the Orkin has as all of these things. I'm not going to go through the entire list, but you get the idea. Right. That radar is is just it's just like pulling your pants down in front of class. There's nothing you can do but get out of range or wait out the duration and hope to keep dodging. Which brings me to my last point, uh, and and this is hopefully you guys understand what I'm trying to get across here, but just imagine there's there's an invisible line going across the battlefield, right? And this and this line continually fluctuates depending on where where your friendlies are and your support, where the enemies are and their support and their aircraft, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You want to continually skirt this line. Be out there, like spotting, capping, torpedoing, uh, contesting enemy DDs, whatever have you. But you don't want to cross that line because once you cross that line, uh, it's, it's usually when you end up dead. Mm -hmm. So just like I said, be a, be a part of the game. Don't just be throwing torpedoes at 11 kilometers or whatever else have you. Be in there, be doing something, but don't don't outreach your uh, your capabilities or your team. And hopefully, if you follow some of those basic steps, that'll get you to at least be basically successful and you can continue to low, learn, grow, and, and be a better better DD player than most of us out there. I think that was I well that's said. that's pretty much it. Thank yeah, you. All, your, all your points are um, are valid. All your points are accurate. I'm sure probably a lot of people already do a couple of them that maybe don't put them at the center of their gameplay, but without a doubt, you heard it from the mouth of one of the best DD players in the game. If you focus and remember those 10 things, you will undoubtedly be a better destroyer player solo, definitely better in division. There is one thing I would say in division play, and this is one thing that a lot of people don't do, and I wish they didn't, you guys do do it. Uh, when you're in a DD and you're divisioned up with a radar and you get into a fight with an enemy DD, if that cruiser player should, the first thing you should do is look over there and tell you immediately if he is or is not or about to be or out of radar range, which gives your, your DD the, the intention or, or the idea to know if he should smoke or shouldn't smoke, etc. Just information that's very, very important. And I'm, yeah. I'm glad some people do it. Not, not a lot of people do. So something you mentioned was the invisible line. That you were talking about and i don't ever think about it but i do it i never want to have an engagement in a destroyer gun on gun uh too far away from my friendlies because i want my friendlies to help me to preserve my hp to kill the enemy faster you know and i feel like a lot of people that play destroyers have no idea that that is a thing but that's that's pretty important when it comes down to it you know, like keeping yeah, keeping that engagement closer to your friendlies makes them more likely to shoot and hit, which takes more HP off the enemy, which reserves more of your HP, etc. So one thing we talked about before this recording, Bravo, was taking a torpedo. Why don't you uh, tell us, taking a torpedo, bow, middle, stern, what's the difference? Why is it better to take it in one particular part of your ship versus another? I'm curious. So there's three pieces to your to your ship that matter, 
right? There's the fore, the aft, and then the, the center of your ship. The center of your ship is what you want to protect most of all, right? That's where almost all of your HP is at. Uh, so if you have to take a torpedo, whether it be from a battleship, uh, sorry, not a battleship, a DD, uh, an aircraft uh, dropping, dropping those torps on you, whatever else it may be, take it, <laughs> and, and this, there's no way to say this, take it in the rear. If, if at all possible. Why? Because most people end up shooting at a DD. They usually end up hitting it in the rear, vice the front, right? And then mm -hmm. it, you, you can just take multiple torpedoes directly in that aft section and still survive if you haven't taken damage in the other, the other sections. Number two would be the four, because, well, you can take a couple torpedoes on that thing uh, and continue, like I said, you'll be damage saturated and they'll keep hitting it and they won't be able to kill you because it's already damage saturated. Protect your, your gut. You know what I mean? Take yeah. Your, Take a punch to the face, take a punch to the butt, but do not take it to the, to the gut unless you absolutely have to. I've seen you take torps to the bow and, and you're 50% HP or more or whatever, and then I've seen you eat torpedoes that, you know, you didn't expect and you're one shot. Yep. Ant anticipated torpedoes are the most dangerous. Okay, you've got really 10 tips there from the best DD player in the game. Really 11 with where to take a torpedo. Thank you, Bravo, for stopping in, helping all these people out, become better Destroyer players. I'm sure they all appreciate it. No, thanks, man. Appreciate the invite and the opportunity. Well, until next month, when we have you back to talk about the same things again. <laughs> Good deal. All right, thanks, Bravo. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. This is another how-to Destroyer video. This was a special one because we had Bravo Foxtrot, one of the best DD players in the entire game, giving you, you know, his 10 basic or kind of 11 basic tips on how to be a better Destroyer player. If you like this video and you found it helpful, let me know in the comments section down below. If you're going to go out and play and you use some of these tips and they make you a better player for Destroyers, Come back to the video, let us know down below, I'll heart that comment. Until the next how-to video, I want everyone to have a good one, and I'll see you next time, boys. Peace!